We're going to start this puppy up. Clear, drop. And welcome back to building the Afford a Plane. In this part, we're going to work on putting in our rudder cables. And that consists of getting the cabling in place and the guides and also the tailwheel and, of course, the rudder at the other end. So let's take a look at how we did it. Now here I'm going to demonstrate what I'm using for the rudder cable guides. Now I first start off with a tube of this is Delrin plastic. Now the size I'm using is 5 8 diameter and the hole I believe is 3 8 but anything in that ballpark will work just fine. In other words this is going to be a conduit or guide for the uh, rudder cable and so I'm going to cut this as necessary so here's an example of a piece I cut of the tube and then here's an and clamp of appropriate size. They come in sizes. This is a um, AN742D10. And basically, this will fit inside. Now, for attaching, and I have a sample piece of the square tube. For attaching to the tube, I'm going to use. A sheet metal screw this is self tapping which is nice in other words it drills the holes and taps itself I mean this is a pretty standard type of thing I'm using a number 10 three quarters inches long it's just a self tapping sheet metal screw and my example for installation is going to be I want to locate it right here at this cross I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to put this here so I can load this up and just aim for my location. And as I turn this on, it will actually drill the hole. And then once it starts, let me go put the tube back in. I can insert the tube and then I can use the gun, but I'm going to torque it down by hand for the last. Use a wrench and then I can wrench this down. just so that I don't over tighten it because the power tool has a way of kind of over torquing it and that way I can and that is really really solid in there and that's how I'm going to install my clamps as I move along the uh, fuselage so just one idea you could also put a drop of Loctite on there if you want to really make sure it doesn't vibrate out, though I don't think that's going to be a problem. They're easy to inspect and very, very tight and nice. And so we can route our rudder cable right through there. If you have any concern of the sleeve slipping out of the clamp, here's one thing you can try. I'm going to drill a very small hole. And I went through the clamp and into the sleeve. And then I'm going to take a very small machine screw. Actually, this is also a self-tapping tiny screw. And I will insert that in the hole. And assuming I drilled the right size hole, it shouldn't be too bad to get in there. 
And by screwing this in, and of course making sure it doesn't go all the way through, there you go. You now have a guaranteed way of making sure and knowing visually, as long as that screw's in there, that this has not shifted. Now when laying out the route for your rudder cables, feel free to use string as I have because that way you can prototype and look for problems. For example, it was important that the rudder cable be brought up near the rear so that it would not conflict with the brace for the horizontal stabilizer. You can see those two strings. In other words, my rudder cable is going above here. If it had been in any other location, it would have rubbed. And that way you can also test out how the cable or string in this case is going to react to motion and follow that all the way from front to rear. Here is a look at the rudder cable system I hooked up for my aircraft here. Now, there's certainly other ways to do this. This is simply one suggestion. Now, each pedal requires a spring to always return it forward, or in other words, to take the slack out of the cable when you're not sitting there. So, I have hooked up a spring to a small hole at the top and it goes down to the bottom down here. And you can just go to the hardware store and find some common springs and get one that kind of gives you the tension that you would like for that purpose. For the connection of the cable, I'm using a small metal tang with a hole on each end. And notice the standoff. I wanted it about an inch from the side of the pedal and that's simply to keep the cable a little further away from your foot. So that's an option and also keeps the cables a little closer to the uh, center line if you will. And as we take a look at the routing of the cable you will notice the first piece of tubing I use is right here and I fashioned that from our Delrin hollow rod that we just talked about and I have two straps on it so that it cannot rotate because we have a slight change of direction in the cable not much but enough to keep the clearance good from any other location so that worked out real good and of course there's one on each side Let's continue down. So, but this is our very first um, cable routing mechanism. Our next one is right here. Now this is where the front strut attaches, or rather the rear strut of the wing. And again, there's just a tiny change in direction as our fuselage is not flat at the bottom. And that tube there does a nice job of making sure that it is kept away from the fuselage. So let's go all the way to the back now. Our third tube for routing the rudder cable is right here. Notice how close it is to the rear. And what this does is lift the cable up and, of course, away from the fuselage because it was very necessary to clear the support for the horizontal stabilizer in the back. So that keeps it definitely clear. And then I use another uh, tang at the back. And the reason I use these is that it makes it very easy to disconnect if we want to work on the rudder or adjust or repair. It's always nice to be able to take those off. 
So let's talk about how I rigged the cable. The first step was to set the rudder to even. In other words, not to the left, not to the right, dead on center. And then I made this end up with the cable. So I could do that right on the bench. And then attached it to the rudder horn. Then I fed the cable, the other end of the cable, through our guides, this one here, and then it was very important to add on these two ferrules because these are the ferrules we'll use to attach our uh, tailwheel to. So I just slid those on and then continue feeding the cable all the way forward, all the way to the front. And then with the rudder held in the neutral position, I then set the pedals in where I wanted them to be in the neutral position and then marked my cable and assembled it, swaged it on, and then hooked it up and it worked out very nicely. And then I basically just repeated it for the other side. It was a very straightforward installation. Our next step now is to attach the tail wheel to this cable so that when we push the pedals, we not only get the rudder to operate, but the tail wheel also. So to prepare for hooking up the cable to your tail wheel, start with a piece of cable about two and a half, three feet long. Just cut off the end. At the other end, make your standard loop and swedge that on. And what we're going to end up doing is using this to hook to a spring of your choice. And then I'm going to go from the spring to a link and then the link to the tail wheel. You can eliminate the link. I'm putting it on there because I never know if I have the best spring or not. And by using the link, that gives me a chance to change the size of the spring by either eliminating the link or drilling another hole in it or whatever the case is. And we'll see how this spring is used. So this will be one side. So let's take this up to our fuselage. And you can hook up your cables. And then when you join them to the rudder cable, you can use a vice grip type clamp to hold them together while you make adjustments and get them so that the tail wheel and the rudder both line up and move together and then it's easy to mark the cables like I've done with the black marks across so that way we can move the clamp and verify while we're swedging the two ferrules that we haven't changed the position of the two cables in relation to each other. And here is the final installation. And it is uh, regular practice when joining cables like this to each other that you use two ferrules. And the tautness of all of this is dependent on the pilot pushing on both pedals at the same time and or the strength of the springs that hold these forward. Without springs, these all go loose. And that's why springs at the pedal are important to keep pressure on both sides when nobody is sitting at the, uh, at the controls. And this will eventually be replaced with a, another cable to support the horizontal stabilizer. And we need to trim this piece off. And by the way, all of these tails, when we cut them off, they should be short, not all the way, but leave a little bit out. And you can use heat shrink as long as you put it on in advance, and that makes things look real tidy and nice. For example, over here, 
if you don't like that loose tail sitting out there you can put heat shrink tubing over again before you create it because you can't get it on now and shrink it down to hold it that makes it look very nice and professional